Well, hello, and welcome to Hearth and Home Nostalgia. Tonight, we're starting a new series that I hope you'll enjoy. Mr. H's History. Time to take a nostalgic look at days gone by. For some of you, maybe it's a chance to remember when. And for others, maybe it's a quick glimpse into a world that we've only experienced through the memories of others. And for all you old-time radio fans, this series will help us look back in time and see the world that was going on while your favorite shows were being broadcast for the first time. Well, now without any further ado, let's get on with our program. So join me, won't you, for Mr. H's History. In the 1940s, Icemen would bring blocks of ice to our homes to keep our food and drinks cold. Let's take a few minutes and look at what a typical day would be like for an ice man. Most of the time, an ice man's day began before dawn. He would get up early, go to the ice plant in time to load his truck with ice for the day. The ice plant was a big building with a huge machine that would make tons of ice in a single day. The ice man would lift blocks of ice onto his truck with tongs or a big hook, taking care not to drop or break them. Once the truck was full, the ice man would head out on his route. He would drive to different neighborhoods and stop at each house that had signed up for ice delivery. Depending on the size of the order, the ice man would carry a big pair of tongs to lift and carry the blocks of ice, which could weigh anywhere from 25 to 100 pounds. People kept foods that went bad quickly like meat, milk, and butter in ice boxes made of wood or metal with a layer of insulation on top. The ice man would break the big blocks of ice into smaller pieces with a big ice pick and then put those pieces in the ice box. The ice man had to do a lot of heavy lifting, and hard work was part of their job. Aside from delivering ice, ice men also had to clean and take care of their delivery trucks. By the end of the day, the ice man would be tired from being on the road for so long and having to do such physical work. But he knew he was helping his customers keep their food fresh and safe to eat, and this was an important service. When we think back to the days of the ice man, we can appreciate how hard they worked and how important their service was to keep our homes cool and our food fresh in a time before refrigerators were common. Icemen not only brought ice to people's homes, but also to places like restaurants, hotels, and hospitals. These businesses needed much bigger blocks of ice because their ice boxes were much bigger. The Iceman would use special tools to move these bigger blocks, and they would work with the business owners to figure out when to make the deliveries. An ice man also had a dangerous job. The ice blocks could be slippery and heavy, which could make it easy to slip and fall. Icemen had to be careful with the blocks of ice so they wouldn't hurt themselves. Also, the machinery in the ice plant could be dangerous, so they had to learn to use it safely. In the 1950s, when refrigerators became more common, the role of the ice pan began to change. Many ice plants shut down, and the people who had worked there had to find other jobs. But there were still some ice delivery services in rural areas that had limited access to electricity. When we look back, it's clear the ice man's job was an important one that helped people before modern refrigeration technology came along. Today, we can appreciate the hard work and dedication of the people who helped keep our food fresh and our homes cool when refrigeration wasn't widely available. In the 1940s, people needed more ice in the summer when temperatures were high. This meant that during the summer, icemen would have to work longer hours and make more deliveries. Some plants had different shifts of workers to make sure that they could keep up with the demand for ice. This way, they could make and harvest ice around the clock. This made it possible for the icemen to deliver more often and to keep up with the demand during the hot summer months. Besides delivering ice, icemen did something else for their customers that was very helpful. They would talk to customers and learn about their lives and their families. This made them a trusted member of the community. Some icemen would even help their customers carry heavy groceries into their homes and do other things when they needed it. An ice man had to be very strong and have a lot of stamina. 
but he also had to be good at talking to people. They had to treat their customers with respect and make sure they were happy with the service they received. This often led to customers coming back and staying with that business. There were many areas of the Iceman's job which he had to be knowledgeable of and skilled in. They had to know how to handle and store the ice in the right way. They needed to keep it from melting or getting it dirty. They had to use various tools like ice tongs, ice picks, ice saws, and other specialized tools to move the ice safely. They had to be able to keep track of their orders, their deliveries, their customers' likes and dislikes and special requests. This required a certain level of education, literacy, and it was not always common among workers in other fields at the time. Now, this job was also very seasonal since people didn't need as much ice in the winter months as they did in the summer. So during the off season, some icemen worked at other jobs while others worked at the plant and they would help him make and store ice for the next season. In the 1950s and 60s, the Iceman business went down because more and more people used modern refrigeration technology. But some businesses that can't use refrigeration, like fishing boats, for example, still use ice delivery services of some sort, even today. When we think back to the time when Icemen were important, we can appreciate their hard work and dedication. In the 1940s, getting ice from one place to another could be very interesting at times. In the early days, horse-drawn carts were used. Many times, the horses would be trained to know their route, so all the Iceman had to do was tell them to go and he could concentrate on the other parts of his job. In later years, trucks were used to move ice, although because it was expensive to own and run a truck, many smaller companies continued to use the horse-drawn carts. Now the ice box itself was something that was very interesting. We don't see these today. They were big boxes made of wood or metal that had sawdust and other things inside to keep the ice cold. The ice man would often help customers take care of their ice boxes by making sure they were properly sealed and that the ice was kept in just the right way. The ice box was also a part of how people got together with their friends. Before there were refrigerators, the only way to keep food and drinks cold was in an ice box. On hot summer days, families would gather around the ice box to cool off. In general, being an ice man in the 1940s meant working hard, being dedicated, and having a certain level of skill. Even though the job was sometimes dangerous, hard on the body, it was also rewarding. And these men became respected members of their communities. Today, we can look back on this time and appreciate the important job that the Iceman did and the unique charm of the ice delivery business. So next time you grab a cold one from the fridge, think about the days gone by and remember the Iceman fondly. <laughs>